Right, so in this video I will be replacing the rear brake pads in this Mini. Right, now, you see the service light comes on because it needs service. Now that light comes on, the car up on a stand, and that will go off after a while, and then this light is on, which means warning. And if you look it up in the book, it says the brake pads are worn. Now I've had a look, and I think it's the rears. So, well, we'll see um, what happens when I've replaced them, but that's what I'm gonna do. So, in order to jack the car up, you need to get the jack. So, that's in the boot here. Just lift up, there's just this little section, there's a little piece there, you can grab it. Now I'm gonna just pull the whole tray out. And I'm gonna take out the jack. And the wrench. And this is the security bolt for the locking wheel nut. And if you ever need it, that's the tow bar. Not sure what that's for. And there's a little screwdriver thing under there as well. Well, a screwdriver. <laughs> Not a screwdriver thing. Right. <coughs> so here's the wheel. Now, you can see this one. You can't get... So you can put a spanner on these. But this one, a spanner won't go on. So this is the locking wheel nut. You can see this this nut. That just goes on there. And that's solid. And then you just put the spanner on there. Right. Okay, next thing. Before we start jacking the car, this car is on a bit of a slope. Um, and the handbrake, or the parking brake, works on the back wheels. So when I jack the back wheels off the ground, this car is gonna to want to roll. And even on the flat, there's a risk it can move. So I'm gonna start with this wheel and lift this up. Now, that will tend to try and lift up the whole side of this car a bit. So the block, that block, I've got this brick, which is fine for stop it acting as a chalk. I'm gonna put this under the other front wheel, kick it in, and then as the car lifts up, this side will be very firmly on the ground and uh, that will stop it from rolling. So, let's get the jack in. All right. All right, so here's the jack. And when I, when you take this out, this is actually really stiff if you turn it the wrong way. So look at the, look at the thread. You can see which way it comes out. So that way's tightening it up. This way is the way it comes out. And after a while, there you go, it starts to move. Right, let's get underneath. Right, so you can see, this is a bit tricky, this car. So this is the jack point. It's got this rubber piece over it. where you put the jack. So that hooks onto there. And pushes up into there. You can see that. Yeah, there you go. You can see up into there. That pushes on there and lifts up the car. Now, on many cars, there's metal under here and you can put axle stands or you can put a jack in, in different places but because this is all plastic you're a bit limited in where you can put additional supports so i've got some axle stands but i'm quite sure where i'm going to put them maybe i'll put them on the axle all right and first the first most important well not most important thing but important thing to do when you're jacking up the car, the wheel nuts normally really tight. 
and you want to loosen them while the car is stable and firm on the ground. Also, um, when you get it up in the air, the wheels have a tendency to spin, so it's virtually impossible to loosen them if they're tight. So when it's on the ground, go through. I've actually loosened these already. Um, sometimes you have to stand on them. They can be really tight, but just crack them a bit. So they're just kind of moving freely. Not enough so the wheel comes loose, but just enough so that they're all just about hand kind of tight. Well, easy to turn. Right, so now I've got the jack. I'm gonna hook this piece up underneath on the jacking point. Let's wind this up some more. Make sure that the base is vertically, try and get the base vertically below the jacking point. And up they go, just start winding. And then as it goes, just wait until the wheel has come off the ground. If you've got a flat tire, if you're jacking it up because you want to uh, change the tire, um, you'll ne you often need to lift it a lot higher because the tire is squashed flat and when you try and put the new one on it's not high enough. But it's not a problem with this one because you see the tire's not flat. Right, that's clear of the ground. I'll stop there. Now, undo the nuts all the way and take them out. No specific order. Just take them out, put them aside somewhere safe. Right, there we go, that's all the nuts off. Now sometimes this can be quite tight. So, this one's come loose. And slide this away. We'll roll it away. I'm gonna put this axle stand underneath this to support it. Now, I'm trying to, trying to find the right place to put it. You can see there's these two bars that go across here to the back, but they're not really weight bearing. This is the main, I don't know what you call it on a car, swinging arm on a motorbike. Um, this is the main piece that supports the weight. So I'm gonna put it under here. Obviously that's on a slope. I need to get it up a bit higher. It's not going to go much higher than that. Now it's very important, do not get underneath the car when it is only on the jack. Because car, because jacks are not reliable. Oops. I think that's going to have to go like that. See that spring compressing now as it's taking the weight. And the jack's virtually gone light. So I'm just winding the jack up a half, a couple of turns just to keep that in place. This is here now. Most important thing, when you put the car on a stand, before you get underneath it, is to wiggle it. Give it a good, reasonably hard shove because if that falls off the axle stand while you're underneath it you're dead so if it's in any way unstable you need to find out now before you get underneath it so that's not going anywhere so i'm happy right get some spanners get this uh oh, let's have a little look here so here's the uh 
um, disc rotor. Here's the caliper assembly. Pads are in here. There's the, the handbrake cable there. We'll be taking that off. So this is the first for me. It's an unboxing video. With one hand, let's see how we do. sensor which is very long so that's going to be connecting way up under there somewhere so that's going to be interesting okay and here are the pads and this kit cost me 78 English pounds, which is about hundred dollars. We got clips and bolts, and here are the pads. Hmm. Okay. Now we're looking at the disassembly. First thing I'm going to do is take off, disconnect the handbrake cable, and if you see here. You can see there's a bolt here, and then there's the, oh no, the the bracket that holds the end of the cable. Now, as I've as I've released the handbrake, that's now loose. But I need to push this back further to get this off. It's a bit tricky, so I'm leveraging my screwdriver underneath the bolt and pushing it on the edge of the bracket, and I can push that down a lot further. And this is a lot easier with two hands. But I can just lift that up like that. That's now out of the way. That's disconnected. Here's the wear sensor cable going through, and this is on the outside uh, pad. So I'll put that back in the same place. It does say you have to replace the wear sensors each time. So let's disconnect that from there. Now I need to undo these bolts, this one and this one that holds the caliper on. And there's a little, you can see a little nut here, or a little, yeah, nut there. So I'm gonna put a spanner on there and another spanner on there. And this, this holds this piece still, and then I'll unscrew this. Right, back from the shops to buy a new 15 mil spanner. So that goes on that piece, and this one goes on here. It's no, I'm doing it. It's gonna take two hands. Here we go. That's pretty tight. OK, 
Okay, now these, the spare ones of these came in the box, so these get thrown away. That's the second one done. What time is it, Una? This one's not very tight. Okay. Sorry, not very loose. This one's quite tight. Let's take a bit more. Where's the, um, Where's that one then? So this caliper should now come off. Yeah. Pull it gently back. And there we go. That's it, oh, and the wear sensor has come off with it. It's come out of the pad. There we go. That's the caliper that's hooked that up there. I need to tie that up. Yeah. So you shouldn't let this caliper hang from the uh, what um, the brake cable because it can strain the cable so you should always tie it up hook it up somehow so it's not straining the uh the brake cable right now they okay let's get these pads off I'm trying to do this <laughs> Leave with them. That's that one. Sheesh. A lot of pad left on that. I've heard people say the wear sensors go off really early on these minis. Look at it. I think the wear sensor was rubbed there. I don't know if that's come loose a bit. But compare this pad. to this one. It's half, just over half worn. Sheesh. I mean, it's, only, it's only also, if you look at it, it's barely come down into the full width of the actual pad. To give you maximum braking. Yeah. Anyway. Try and enjoy. Right. Get the other both of them are, and both of them are the same. I mean, I've had pads where it's been about one millimetre. Get these clips off. Just lever them up at the bottom here. Get them out. 
There we go, there's one. Going for that one. Right. That. Now that all needs a thorough clean. I'm just checking. Okay, these are moving back and forth very easily. Alright guys, that one as well. So they don't need any work. Okay. Now, yeah, we need to wind back that cylinder and do the wear sensor, give this a clean first. And for this I'm just gonna use a good old toothbrush. Never throw out old toothbrushes. That'll do. Next thing, you'd have seen this on my other videos, silicon grease. I think what I'm gonna do, put some on things. These all look exactly the same. Okay. Just want two of these. And that. Well, I'll put these on first actually. And they just clip over. You see here, they're basically just clipped over that piece there. So this this piece is tight and it clips over this. And I'll just push it up. Got it slightly off. Let's look at that. Look at this bottom one here. Now, yeah, give it a bit of contrast. This bottom one here was slightly off centre. It's still a little bit off. I'm going to reposition that top one. There we go. Now, I've got this silicon grease, which I'm going to put on these. I'm getting out. I'm going to need some more. I'm running quite low. 
being careful not to get any on the actual friction part of the pad. Don't need a lot. Okay. Let's put that in. Just check the pads are actually the same. So this is the one with the wear sensor and it's got this extra piece stuck down there. There we go. Just kind of hook the bottom in and uh, flick it around. Same for the next one. Leave a little bit extra on the front because that's where it's moving to. Right, let's put this one in the back. Again. Let's see how this goes. I haven't got this one handed. So this one goes in. Again, similar thing at an angle. Try and straighten it out. Two pieces. Top and bottom. Ah, there you go, that one's gone in. And mm, it's probably gone in a bit too far. may not be quite suited enough. Come in. 
Uh, it's really annoying. The bottom one goes in. Fine. The top one is going in fine. Just can't quite get both of them in together. to do I wonder if I haven't what well, I think has happened is I haven't cleaned these beds enough and what's happened is this piece or this one hasn't quite gone in enough so let's get these off and give them another clean all right let's them in um, I used the, uh, there's a little bit of a ridge of rust on, uh, on the bottom and the inside of this piece. So, uh, which probably maybe water had gathered at the bottom of it and made it a little bit rustier. So I scratched that all off, put it in and that's fitted in okay now. So now we need to wind back the caliper. All right. This is my special caliper winding back tool. Now, what happens is where you've got the handbrake built into the caliper like it is with these with the back brakes, the cylinder has a thread on it. This slave cylinder that this so when you put when you put the brake on, brake fluid comes down here, pushes into this reservoir and there's a cylinder in here. This is a cylinder which pushes out and crushes the brakes against the rotor disc, which um, stops the car. Now, that's fine when you're just braking quickly because you're putting pressure on it. Um, but when you want to park overnight and you put the handbrake on, what happens is that the hydraulic pressure can leak away. And you, uh, if it was fully hydraulic and uh, all of a sudden in the middle of the night your car starts rolling. So they keep the cable process working for the brake and what happens is that the cylinder has a very um, fine thread on it. So that it, I'm not exactly certain how it works inside, but it, <laughs> there's a thread in there anyway. It doesn't, Im, doesn't impede the, uh, um, the hydraulic foot brake, um, but it supports the use of uh, a cable for the handbrake so this piece fits over you'll see there's some notches in here and that's one way of telling actually that that's present on it apart from the fact there's a cable there um, the fact that you've got notches in the end of the cylinder because on the front brakes um, there aren't any notches in these in the ends of these cylinder they're just flat because they can just push straight back because there's no handbrake on them um, so these there's all sorts of different kinds there's two different this supports two different sizes of, of cylinder these notches will engage with those spikes there. And uh, this piece then goes in there and winds the thing down. So I'll set that up and you can see it work. Put that on there. Wind that down to the bottom. Put that on. Put this in. And then 
climbed it out. Alright, let's have a look at this. So, that has eased back a little bit now, but what was happening, you can see this has got a lip around the edge. And as that was turning, the shroud gator was twisting. Um, and it's in danger of tearing. So I've had to go and buy another um, compressor. And if you see, these ones don't have the shroud on. So there shouldn't be any trouble with that catching the uh, that shroud as it turns. The other thing I've done is I've bought some silicon spray which I can use to lubricate that a bit so it's less inclined to uh, catch. So hopefully that will spin more easily now as well. Interesting looking at these two tools. So this one I bought many years ago to compress the back um, cylinder for, for the back brakes. This new one, You'll see this mechanism is virtually identical. Um, and it's got the same thing there, except it comes with three pieces. So there's this one just on its own. This one's double-sided, two different widths. And then this one is nice. So I'm not sure how to use that. I thought this was, uh, yeah, so probably what happens with that is I think this one is for turning down the, um, yeah, this is for turning down the front brake. So you put that over the front brake cylinder and then just put one of these on and that will just turn it down. So that's a nice addition. So. Now you can see here, even with the new, what's it, it's catching and twisting. So I'm going to have to really ease this around carefully. Do something with it, because that's no good. It's going to, this gate is just going to tear. Okay. Right, I've wound down the cylinder. I'm not over the moon with how that... It should, if it was new. See here, it's gone, it's folded in nicely on itself. And uh, it's well out of the way. This one here, over here, it's not inclined to fold in on itself. So it's a little bit proud. But I think it's clear when I put it on. Anyway, there's it, wound back. And just put the caliper back on and put it all back together.
Sort out this wear sensor. And then that goes. That's all look under here. I'm all for getting it out of the way, the wheel arch, but this is nuts. So, goes along here, along here, goes up there, to there, goes through there, and then it comes down. I don't know if you can see that. Down the other side, down there. Clips and then that falls out. I'm gonna have to do that for two ends. I don't know if you can see just up there. Yeah. So all the ones so far have been clipped. Which I've unclipped. This one is a uh, what do you call it? Oh. I can't think of the name. <laughs> oh, no, it's gone out of my head. Anyway, I've got to snip that, so I've got to get a pair of pliers or scissors up there and snip that. Plus, the size of this hole here. I am not at all convinced that that plastic thing is gonna go through there with that wire in there, with the other wire in there. And I do not wanna to have to disconnect this one just to do that. It's ridiculous. So I've attached the cable, the brake sensor cable at the other end. I've got that back in the hole and clipped it back on where it was. Now I haven't attached this cable yet to any of the supporting wires that it, that it was attached to. So two things, it gives me a bit more play, but also, um, well yeah, it gives me a bit more play. It gives me the chance to insert this into the right place. Um, and once that's in, yeah, I'm gonna have to take that off actually. Okay, this is going to be a two-handed job. It's quite tricky to get in. Let's put it in the right way round. And then there we go. Let's click then. Better off. It's on the other one, but 
Anyway, all right. So that clips in. I'm just gonna hold this back where it goes. Just screw these bolts in loosely. I'm not putting any grease or anything on them. They've got, um, what's it called? Loctite on them already. That's the bottom one in, just loosely. Right, now I'm going to reattach this. Cable. I'm just attaching these cables where they, kind of where they lie, really. Reattach that nylon lock piece. It's attached. Well, that's just a case of tightening up these bolts.
So that's the nuts done up. And some old one. Now I've just got to do the handbrake. This is going to be a two-handed job, so I'll leave the camera there. But basically, just the op well, actually, that was a one-handed job. It just fell on. So that's it. So, this is interesting. So, the sensor came out as I was taking this apart. And I'm not happy with the fact that there's a dip here, which could fit nicely in there if this was a bit longer, but it's not. Plus also, the cable routing through there isn't very good either. Now, having had a look at these, this is the pad from this side, as you can see where the two arms went and this piece in the middle. And this is not the one with the wear sensor. So if you take the other pad, and put it here, this seems to show some signs. This is like triangles there, there, there where the uh, cylinder would be, so I think I've got the pads in the wrong way. So I am going to swap them around. Right. I've moved into the cable and just tightening this up again, these two bolts up again, but I did it wrong last time. Which I just want to show you correctly this time. So. Last time I did this top bolt up fully tight um, without having tightened at the bottom one at all. And that isn't right. You shouldn't uh, tighten up a bolt fully. You shouldn't tighten up bolts in a sequence and you shouldn't tighten up any of them fully before you've got all of them. Um, kind of partially, well, or fully, at least screwed in. Um, so that top one is now fully screwed in. So I know that top piece is accurately in the right place. So I can tighten up this bottom one now that I've got it in. Right. And now I can tighten up this top one. I mean, it may make no difference, but if something's gone in a little bit crooked, you can strain something. Oops. Which you don't want to do. So.
Alright. There we go. Now, you can see this cable works much more smoothly. That's coming out clearly out the middle there. There's no catching. And there's a little recessed part on the um, protector there that just fits inside that little gap there and holds that. So that's, that's right. That's connected. So we're done. Lift this back up and put the wheel on. So I've hand wound in all the nuts. What's going on? That one's just binding. That one's binding. That one's binding. That one's binding. See how the wheel is moving. Binding. Oh. Binding. Binding. Binding, binding, it's getting tight, 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 right. So all of these are tight. Right. That's the wheel spinning. It's not running out of true, I haven't pinched it anywhere. I'm putting the, you can't see that, can you? And can yet. Right, so just spin that. Put the tool against it. There's no noticeable play in the wheel as it spins around. So that's one straight. Lower it all the way down and tighten the bolts up fully. fully. That's all the way down. When you're doing these up, do make sure you get that you're on square. Because otherwise you'll round over the bolt heads. And uh, you want to get them off. I don't normally bother stamping on them. Can do if you're not very heavy. Just so you know, if, you're not, if you think you haven't done tight enough, but a good big whoop like that, I think it's plenty. Right, now. Let's have a look inside. At this sensor, so two things. Two things to do in here. One, first thing, pump the brake because that's, that piston isn't touching. So, okay, probably should do that with the engine when it's way. But anyway, let's start the engine. Cuts in. Says it needs a set. That's still on. Do we have to reset that? All right. Now this is how to reset the warning light. So I put the key in. Turn it on. Nothing happens. That warning light comes on. Start the engine. Orange goes back to red. That thing goes back to red. Right, and there's one of the lights is there as well. That's nothing to something different. 
Okay, so press the indicator stalk, left indicator stalk. See this line here changing? Oops. Until we get to set info. Press and hold the indicator stalk. Now we've got check info, service info. Press and hold this for 10 seconds. Right, now we get the warning light for the rear brake sensor that tripped. So press and hold the indicator for some time. Now it comes up reset. Press and hold again. Keep it held in, it's resetting. And it's reset. And that's it, I think. Set the lights still on, and it's gone back. Right, now, turn the brake on, and I'm lowering the handbrake. Ho ho! And the red light is gone. Excellent. There you go.